Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. When we think of the word leader, our mind tends to jump to political officials, business CEOs, and local community figures. How frequently do we imagine our youth as leaders? More importantly, what are we doing to shape them into the leaders of our future? The South Shore Leadership Youth for Community Engagement, or SLICE, program is working to instill important leadership skills and region knowledge into our youth. With us today are four students of the SLICE program. We'll start with Kyle Polster and Sydney Berenda, and we have Sean Meyer and Katherine Jankowski. I did really well with everybody's name, yes. didn't I? <laughs> so I'm really happy to have all of you guys on the show today. We've been planning on doing a show like this for a long time. So the audience kind of knows a little bit about you all and who you are. Sydney, just tell us where you live, what school you go to, and uh, maybe a couple things you're involved in. Um, well, I go to Rensselaer Central High School. I'm a senior there. I'm involved in sports such as volleyball, golf, and I'm also highly involved in student council, National Honor Society, Community Service Club, you name it, I'm in it. <laughs> okay, you're in everything, aren't you? I'd like to think so. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll, I'm doing ladies first, so I'll come over to Catherine. So Catherine, same thing. Well, I'm Catherine. I go to Valparaiso High School, and I'm a junior, and I'm involved in, I'm on the Vicette team. I am in Slice, obviously. I'm in Drama Club, and I'm in the upcoming school musical. I'm the dance captain of the school musical. I'm in Hope Club. I work with special needs students, and like Sydney, you name it, I'm probably in it. And you guys are in everything. So Kyle, <laughs> what are you in? Um, and where you live. Again, I'm Kyle. I go to Highland High School. I'm a junior. Um, I'm an active member of the Boy Scouts of America, Order of the Arrow, Student Council. I'm on the swim team. Um, like the lady said, you name it, I do it. Um, okay. Both in school and out of school, I try to stay active. You sound like very active. Sean, how about you? Um, I'm Sean. I go to Lake Central High School in St. John. Um, I'll reiterate what all of them said. I am in almost everything as well. <laughs> I'm part of class cabinet, student council. I'm part of the principal's advisory team. I'm in Spanish club. I'm in a lot of things. I thought you were going to say you were a swimmer and you know doing the same thing they were. But well, you're not. besides that, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to have you all here. You know, for our audience who doesn't know about Slice, you know, and we've talked about this a couple times in the program. I've said, you know, can you guys explain to what Slice is? So if somebody came up to you and said. What is SLICE anyway? What would you say to them? What would you, how, what's your answer? Well, I actually get the question a lot. Um, being gone from school once a month kind of raises a lot of questions at my school. And so I try to explain to them that it's a leadership program that I was nominated for, I was interviewed for, I had to apply, all that fun stuff. And basically every month we travel across north, Northwest Indiana and we learn about different traits and skills that leaders should possess and how we can develop those skills in ourselves as well. And then in the end we graduate with a better sense of how we lead and how others lead and how we can interact with other leaders as we get older. So. Wow, that was good, wasn't yeah, that it? Was really that was good. very good. So, so, would anybody add anything to that? Or is that that's that's pretty good. So, so let me maybe sh shift to how did you get picked to be in this program? Because you're the only one from your school. You're the only one from Highland, right? There's a couple from Valpo, yeah, I think, and there's a couple from like five. Lake Central. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you may have the biggest group. I think it's yeah. four, isn't there? But no, there's five. There's five. Yeah. Okay, so how did you get picked for this then? Do you know? Well, I re when I was a freshman, I got called down to the principal's office. In a good way. In a good way. Okay. Actually, no, I was a sophomore. And he said, I remember when you were a freshman and you came in and you introduced yourself to me just because you wanted to know who your principal was. And for that reason, I know you're going to be a great leader. So I would like to nominate you for the SLICE program. Well, as I recall, it was only maybe about four students out of Valpo High School that were nominated. Yeah, there were three of us four. nominated by our principal, and then yeah. there was one nominated from a different program. From the YMCA, yeah. I think, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what was it like to go through the interview for you, Kyle? Um, so actually, what's funny enough is this is actually the second time 
going through the interview process the first time i was interviewed to be part of the slice one and i was accepted and upon going to our first meeting i realized that i had two conflicts and i wanted to get the full experience of the slice program so i graciously declined and my principal allowed me to come back again this year so with the interview process we were at lost marsh in whiting um, there were three very kind ladies that interviewed me, and it was just as this is, just another conversation. They, they were kind. Were, were your interviewers kind, Sean? Yeah. To you? They, oh. were, they were funny, too. They <laughs> would make jokes and make me laugh, and I felt comfortable with them, which was nice and really eased the nervousness of the interview. Do you even remember who interviewed any of you? Like who they were? I had Cindy. Cindy Rojas. I had Cindy as well. As well. Yeah. Okay. So she was the program director at the time, but did you remember any, any of the other people interviewed you? There was a superintendent. The name doesn't come to mind, however. Okay. <laughs> so it was a pretty impressive group, though, I think, right? Oh, yes. Were you intimidated at all? At first, I admit, I was a little nervous <laughs> at first, but they were quite interested in me, and I loved that. So yeah. I just kept talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Sydney pointed out, you guys, we, we meet once a month for a whole day. Uh, you get out of school for that. Is that a good thing? Absolutely. Yes, of course. It's, it's good. All right. Maybe not to the teachers as yeah. much as it is to us. Okay. <laughs> so uh, at the most recent session, which I think we had at Purdue Calumet, we filmed some of the other students in the program kind of answering some of the questions. So I want to kind of run some tape of that and uh, let you all kind of hear what they had to say. I think we asked, uh, there was three questions. I think the first question we asked was, what did they learn about the region? So let's take a look at what some of your uh, other people in the program had to say about that question. All right. Can you tell me what you've learned about the region through the SLICE program? Through the SLICE program, I've learned about countless projects that are going on from bike trails to road reconstruction to just simply meeting new people that have projects in mind for the future. And it's really awesome because like most community people don't really know what's going on in the community unless they get out there and talk to people. So through this, I feel like I've been connected more to my community, knowing what's going on, and it's just been such a great experience. It's like a whole vast world that we didn't know. That was like basically like right in our backyard. Before the slice program, I had a little bit of like preconceived, like I don't want to say judgments, but like I didn't really know as much about some of the cities that I had never really been to. I've definitely learned that through slice, there's there's so much more to my region than I thought there was. I was always kind of just stuck in my own town. I never really left Munster. But we go on these bus tours every month, and I see, like, wow, there's so much I can be doing in all these other towns. There's cool activities and just lots of things to do that I would have never known about. Gotten a lot of, like, region pride and kind of just, like, embracing it more so than just kind of being like, oh, yeah, we live in the region. It's, like, kind of becoming an asset and something that is really enjoyable. Pretty much everything you could think of we <laughs> learned through this program. So they said a lot there in that few moments. What else would you add to that? What have you learned about the region in this program? Well, about the region, for example, when we went on that bus tour through Gary, we learned so much about how there are parks going up and how there's all of these, this new infrastructure happening to make Gary not as stereotyped as it usually is. Use the infrastructure word. Did you know that word before you went into Slice? I did not. <laughs> We've talked a lot about infrastructure, haven't we? Well, how about the rest of you? What, what else have you kind of picked up about the region? Well, I come from a very small town, which is agriculturally based. And so going around Northwest Indiana, it's kind of opened my eyes to all the other things that Indiana has to offer as far as industry goes as well. Um, all of that information was completely new to me because my house is surrounded by corn, and that's about it. So that's what Slice has opened my eyes to. That reminds me of Brooke and her seeing some of the urban for the first time. And she's going, oh, my gosh, this is all in northwest Indiana. <laughs> How about the rest of you, just Kyle? Uh, I actually recall one of our slice sessions. There was a man, I don't recall his name, but he pulled out a very large size rat and talked about how we very frequently, like Catherine noted, um, think of northwest Indiana as a negative thing, or at least think of certain areas um, and I think Slice really adds a positive light that whether there are good things going on or there are bad things, we're either improving them or just staying consistent with them, that the bad are becoming good and that the good are what they are, and that no matter what, that there are a lot of opportunities in Northwest Indiana. I think he was trying to make a point about us calling ourselves region rats, right? Yeah, and, and that, that it was that kind was of... not a good thing. Yeah. 
we should change. Sean, anything else from you? I fully agree with everything they just said. Um, one thing that really stuck out to me was when we had our session in Purdue North Central. I never realized that this area, because my town, it's more, there's not a lot of corn and such, and I just couldn't believe that there was, it felt like a whole different world, and it was practically an hour away, you know, it was amazing. We live in a very diverse region, that's for sure. So let's take another look at, at some of the other questions we ask. Another question, we ask, how, have this, how has this program affected your leadership? And let's see what some of your other classmates had to say about that. Can you tell me how SLICE has affected your leadership skills? SLICE has definitely given me confidence in myself to like talk to others, talk to people in higher positions than me, and even people my age. Slice has like definitely like amplified my leadership skills a lot. I feel like I connect with people a lot better. I know how to handle things a little bit better. I've kind of learned a lot about myself and the way I lead. I've definitely been able to stand out more and say what I want to say. Um, I'm more self-aware. I'm more willing to say what's on my mind and take a step towards what I want to get done in a group. Before I was really shy about public speaking, I would get nervous and my voice would shake and being through, being in this program helped me come out of my shell a lot and now I can just go up to anyone and shake their hand and be like, hi, my name's Olivia and show a good presence and how to present myself and I think that's so important in today's society, communication, networking, how to present yourself. Slice has definitely enhanced my leadership skills. It has um, gave me a better definition of what a leader is. So connections, uh, talking about leadership, uh, more comfort in doing things. So how has this affected each of you in terms of your leadership? How has it affected you, Sean? I would say that I was a very outgoing before, person beforehand, but now I feel like I'm even more outgoing and I feel more comfortable speaking with strangers and telling them what's on my mind and how I feel that we should fix this problem and how I feel that what you're doing is right, but it could be done a little better and things like that. How about somebody else? I think a lot that um, as young leaders, there are a lot of things that metaphorically are like dangled in front of our face and we just don't see the opportunity. And that with Slice, we're able to take what we're given and use it towards a positive direction. It's all about using the resources that we have around us. And that's one of the biggest struggles of Northwest Indiana, that people don't see the positive future that we have and that we have to take what we have and use it for the better. How about your leadership? How has it affected you, Sydney? Um, I can definitely say that as far as leadership within myself goes, there is one thing that I pulled out of this program, and it was we did assessments of ourselves and how we interact in a team. And I realized that my position in a team, I tend to take everything upon myself and leave nothing for anyone else. And What a surprise, right? Yes, I know. <laughs> and that leads to stress, which leads to a job not as well done as it could have been. And so I've learned to kind of let go of that and just give to the team what I can and not bear down and take everything upon myself. So if I had to name one thing of all my leadership skills that I've learned, it would definitely be that. Wow. Catherine. Well, something that, I've, that I always tell people I've taken away from Slice is that we had one session where we, we were split up into groups and we decided if we were a more of a front leader or a side leader or a behind the scenes leader or someone who kind of stays in the middle. And until then, I didn't realize that there were other types of leaders except a front leader. I didn't realize that you could be the person that's in there with the group teaching. Like if, for example, if you were teaching a dance or something, you don't always want to be the person up front yelling and ma making you seem like you're the big picture when really the big picture is being considerate to those that are in the group and being a side leader and not always being the spokesperson, if you will. You guys sound like you've learned so much in, in this. I, I love listening to these stories. Mm -hmm. the, the third question I think we ask uh, some of the other people in the program, and by the way, I think we're, we're seeing some of the other students from what, Munster and Michigan City and uh, Lake Ridge schools and uh, all over the place, I think, uh, so far. So I think the last question was, how do you see yourself as a leader into the future? So let's see again what some of them said. How do you see yourself as a leader in the future? Before Slice, I think I saw myself as somebody who would be working always maybe 
at the bottom or close to the bottom, not necessarily in a bad way. I just never really thought I could lead other people or be in charge of anything. Now I feel like I have the tools, the resources, and the knowledge to accomplish things and be able to lead a, a group towards an end of a project. In the future, I see myself definitely effective. I, before, I, wasn't, I was a little unsure of myself, of who I was, and I didn't really know, I didn't have a vision of where I wanted to go, but being for this program, I now know exactly what I want to do, exactly how I want to do things. It's given me huge amounts of confidence and willingness to take on leadership roles. In the future, I see myself as a leader, just like kind of trying to help and improve things, and I really see myself in like a local like setting like northwest indiana like i see myself back here trying to enhance things for the future making sure things run smoothly so where do you see your futures in leadership i mean where do you see yourself going well from this program i feel that i am more equipped with the resources i might need in the future if i were to go and be in charge of other projects in my career or my profession as, as I get older. I feel like I could go back to the business cards I've received and look at them and say, oh right, this person was in charge of something like this. Maybe he could help me get this for my project. And I just feel a lot more prepared and confident in myself. Do you think we'll see you all back in this region down the road? I mean, nobody can really make a permanent commitment to that kind of thing. But do you? Do you see yourself as being a leader in this in this region in the future? Yeah, I do. I see myself coming back here 10, 20, who knows, maybe 50 years down the road. I just, this is my home and I want to make it better. You'll be really old in 50 years. <laughs> Think about that. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> but we'll still take you back, Sean. Thank you. And I feel that there's so many resources here in Northwest Indiana that we can use to our advantage and make this region such a wonderful place for people to live and visit and yeah. So is Rensselaer going to be your place forever or what? <laughs> Honestly when I started this program and I had a picture in my mind I will be moving somewhere where it's sunny all year long but after going through the program you kind of develop an emotional attachment to the issues within your area and you feel like it's your duty to at least play some type of a role or a part in fixing certain things or making things better or improving your community. So I can most definitely say that somehow I will be led back to this area whether it's Rensselaer or Northwest Indiana in general. I feel kind of an obligation to somehow make it better in some way. Wow. Kyle. Well, whether or not I stay here, um, I think that the things I've learned here I can take other places and that if I end up in other places that I'm sure I'll miss Northwest Indiana and find myself back here. So you still have those roots. Well, we have uh, almost 50 students in this program from 25 different high schools in the region in the seven county area. Can you talk a little bit about what some of your, the other people they've seen, some of the, our viewers have seen some of the pictures of some of them, but what are the other students like in this program? What are they like? That's one of my favorite part of the SLICE program is meeting people, and I love being able to have met people from every, basically every school in the region, and it's a wonderful opportunity to make connections with people in Valparaiso and Hobart and Rensselaer and things like that, because you, there's so many resources, as I said before, in the region, and having a connection with each person in each town is a great, great thing to have, especially in the future. What are, the, what are the students like, the other ones? Well, as you saw from um, when we gave our introductions about ourselves, that just us in this group alone, we probably represent at least 30 different organizations. So I can comfortably say that as a SLICE group, we encompass every high school sport there is, all the clubs that are within our high schools. We're a very, very diverse group of people that, although we're here for the same thing, uh, currently we all have a lot of different directions. There are future doctors and lawyers, and I just think that it helps us learn more as people by seeing what other people are like. Is, is it been challenging to work with this really diverse group of students or to be, be with them? We talked about the upside of it. Is there some challenge in that too? I, I personally didn't find any challenge because we all, we all get along so well because we're all in the same boat. We're all missing a day of school and we all are involved in so many things. and. We all, our goal is to become a better leader for our organizations and for the better of our community. So we all can relate on a lot of different levels. I personally, I love everyone in the SLICE program. 
So is, is, how about you? You're coming from the cornfields here. So is it tough <laughs> to work with all these city kids? Uh, well, sometimes it's a challenge just to understand where they're coming from and also to kind of relate on that level, but at the same time, we're all working towards a common goal, like you said. So basically, we're all wanting the same thing, and so that's easy to work on as far as that goes. But also, you have to remember that <laughs> I have no idea about the region, and some of them, you know, it's their hometown, and so you have to kind of work with them on that too. There's always going to be compromise involved, but in the end, we're all working towards the common goal, and that's what matters. Well, we are recruiting right now for Slice 3, which will start in January, and everybody has to be nominated for the program. I know our viewers would want to know that, nominated by your school. I think you were all nominated by your schools, mm -hmm. but some people are nominated by other organizations, youth-serving organizations and so forth. Um, so we're very excited about the next class. So w one last message maybe for each of you. We're down to probably about 10 seconds apiece or something, you know, something you'd want to the viewers or the youth out there to know that you've picked up from this program, some message? Um, I would just like to say that I am extremely honored to be in this program and if you were to get nominated, take this opportunity and get as much as you can out of it, do the interviews and take business cards and save them and really use the knowledge you gain from this experience. Okay. And make sure you work on a service project too, right? <laughs> so how about the rest of you, just a thought? Um, I definitely, as a youth, if you don't have the opportunity to be in the SLICE program, that you need to be completely comfortable with yourself and to use the resources that are around you because if you want to complete anything, there are a lot of things around you that you can use that you might not even realize. That's good. Sydney. I would say if it's not SLICE, make it something. Be involved somehow within your community, within your school, within different programs that you're in. Number one rule, be engaged in something, something that you're passionate about, and you'll go far with that if you're really, truly involved. I am also honored to have been a part of this program. It, it's really opened my eyes to many different things in the region, and I really hope that as a youth, I really hope that other teenagers and children will take the region's resources, resources to their fullest advantage and do everything that makes them happy in the region proud of them. Well, I get the privilege of working with you all the time, so this is pretty pretty awesome, and I thought a great way to end the show today would be for you all at the same time to say, we are leaders. Can you do that? <laughs> yes. so, so let's hear it. We, we are, are leaders. leaders. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Weren't these students on the show today just incredible? I'm so excited when I see young people engaged in our communities. Giving them an opportunity to, co to connect with issues and people now is one way to assure that we have a future generation ready to tackle our local challenges. We need fresh ideas and new efforts to restore and maintain the vitality of our region connecting our young people to current leaders and offering them a chance to be involved is a very important approach to keep our talented youth wanting to be part of the fabric of Northwest Indiana and our communities. Thanks for watching today's Lakeshore Focus. I hope it renewed your faith in our local kids who are the leaders of the future. I would love to get your reactions to the show, so send your thoughts and comments through our email address, which is listed on your screen. Our website is also full of exciting features. You can view past Lakeshore Focus episodes, listen to Lakeshore Public Radio, and watch many of our public broadcast shows. Tell your friends and family about this show and how you watch Lakeshore Public Television. Make sure you join us next week for another Lakeshore Focus. Until then, I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying, make a positive difference in our world today.